Okay, now you're expert dancer. Hit two couples, forward and back. You four step to the middle, circle left, circle left. Reverse and circle right. Back out of there, side couples, up to the middle and back. Step to the middle, circle to the left. Reverse and circle to the right. Back out. Face your corner, new corner. Swing that corner. That's going to be your new partner. Swing her once in the promenade. Remember, men are on the inside. Women are on the outside. Follow the crowd. When you get to the back to the man's home position, you're done. So face the middle. Good. Side two couples once more. Go forward and back. You four, circle to the left. Circle right, single file. Good, drop hands. Stop at home, square your set. Face your corner. Swing your corner. Promenade your corner. Now, if I counted right, that's your original partner, is it? Excellent. Okay, we're going to change it just a little bit now. Head couples go forward and back. Head couples step into the middle. When you get to the middle, instead of circling, we're going to make a right hand star. So all four of you put your right hands, palms together, fingers towards the sky. Now the same head couple step into the middle, make a circle of four people, and circle left once around. Good. Reverse and circle right. Till you're home, back out of the square you're set. Side couples up to the middle and back. You four step to the middle and circle left one time. Good. Reverse and circle to the right. Go the other way back. Back out when they get back home. Okay. This is the point where we're going to change partners. And the way we change partners is we're going to swing our corner. So look at your partner, turn your back on your partner, and the person you're looking at is your corner. Okay, uh, step up and swing your corner. Once around and promenade. There are a number of different ways to swing. And now, and that, and when you promenade, you take your partner, men on the inside, women on the outside, and walk uh, counterclockwise once around the room, around the square back to the man's home position, and you'll have a new partner. Okay, can I, can I demonstrate the swing for you? The, the way we normally swing, and you can, there's a number of ways to do it, but this is the way we normally swing, watch. On, so you can see that thing. Uh, I bought this one. I could have bought one that was stainless steel. But I thought, well, I want to experience what the Civil War, I want to know what yeah. rusty water tastes like, or, you know, and stuff. Yeah. But what they would have done is they would have put beeswax in there and they would have heated it. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, but up until the Civil War time, uh, lighting was very important. Important artificial lighting because uh, the only thing they had really was candles. They didn't even have kerosene at that time, and uh, the candles were generally made out of beeswax. This is a beeswax candle, and it's very expensive. Plus, it doesn't last very long. This candle here would probably burn for about 15 or 20 minutes, and that would be it. So. They used them very sparingly. Uh, just prior to the Civil War, in 1858, was when they finally discovered how to drill for crude oil. Up until that time, they knew of crude oil for thousands and thousands of years, but they generally found it just in uh, floating on the water or in ponds or coming up from the ground. But it wasn't until Titusville in 1858 that they finally discovered uh, crude oil. So, uh, the one thing they made out of that was kerosene. And in the process of making kerosene, uh, they uh, had formed gasoline, but they didn't know what to do with gasoline. They were actually throwing it away because it was a byproduct. So, 
lighting was very, particularly Civil War soldiers, if they had a lamp or a candle, they would only use it when absolutely necessary at night. Yes, it was. And when I first started using it, I could taste the honey. I mean, I, when I drank water, I could, it tasted like honey. And I, it, it should be redone. I should have redone. Uh -huh. But what they would do then, again, they would pick these up off the battlefield, you know, and they would take and put them over a fire, and particularly the Confederate, they'd put them over a fire and melt that solder out so they had two halves. Now they could use that as a plate uh, oh, dish, okay. or they could use it as a shovel, you know, to dig a foxhole or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And oh. Oh. oh my goodness. Oh. All of the veterans, not just Civil War veterans, the uh, stone column at Linwood has three Spanish American War veterans on it. It has World War One vets, World War Two, Vietnam, Korea, and I think there's some Gulf War people listed on it. This morning we heard about veterans and I was glad to lead it because these men deserve more than a name on a tombstone. We, can, we have tools to define particularly Civil War vets, their units, their service, their background, and we can get some more. We have resources at Ross Library and the Heise Museum. I forgot to mention that Henry Brumgard of the 7th uh, Cavalry, Company E, would have known Wilbur Loveland, quartermaster sergeant of that same company. The High Z has a cache of letters from Wilbur Loveland home and is a process, in the process of reissuing them. There you get a real sense of uh, what the war was like I hope we can get something started to, as I said, catalog and list all of our veterans. It's the least we could do for them because we owe them. Thank you. The infantry buried uh, down at Linwood. And there's a Jacob Stabley of Company C, 81st Regiment. Jacob fought at the wheat field in Gettysburg. There's a monument to the 81st there. That was a unit of the 1st Division, 2nd Corps. He was a fighter. The regiment, the Seven Day Battles of 1862, later fought at South Mountain and Antietam. His flag must have on it uh, the wilderness, Pennsylvania, and Cold Harbor because they were in the overland campaign of 1864. He was at Farmville, one of the last battles two days before the surrender of uh, Lee. I'm here for a different purpose other than to recount a few 